Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata. Hope you guys are having a good week so far. As always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech and gaming world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 27th of August. We are of course expecting Gamescom tonight, but that's not what I'm here to talk about of course. But I am pretty hyped and you know what I'm hoping for guys, I don't even have to say it. Anyway, we've got quite a bit to get through today, so I'm just going to get stuck right in with some comments from TSMC. So this is all thanks to a report from Anantech.com. I will of course include a link to their report in the description below this video. I would suggest you give it a read. It is definitely worth, well, reading. Anyway, so what actually happened was TSMC have detailed some key improvements and just kind of given us a skinny on what's going on with their production at a recent technology symposium. So they of course provided key details for both 5NM and 3NM nodes. And they also went on to say that the 5NM node is its currently highest quality process node to date when evaluated in terms of densities of defects. And apparently they are a full quarter ahead than those for its predecessor, which of course would be 7NM. And they have also said that yields for the process are actually better than, once again, 7NM. Now, I do believe I've covered something along this line in the past when it comes to the yields for the um, 5NM process, but that is off the top of my head, so don't quote me on that. But regardless, they also shared that out of all of the wafers that they're producing in 2020, that does include from 16NM plus and below, of course, 11% will belong to 5NM. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about the amount of chips that actually is, that's actually a significant portion of their production. And they also said that they are expecting to double and tri triple excuse me, production levels in 2021 and 2022, respectively. And they also said that the N3 process nodes will either, and I'll say either, improve performance between 10 to 15 percent or improve power consumption by 25 to 30 percent over the N5 node, which of course is 5NM. As I said, the full report is linked below. I have very much just given you the cliff note to so go and read in Kutris's report. It is definitely worth a read in my personal opinion. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next shiny, shiny topic, and it is some comments from John Petty Research. So, they have been talking a lot lately about the PC graphics market, and they are continuing that trend as they have released their Market Watch report for the second quarter of this year. So, they have said that overall GPU shipments have increased 2.5% from last quarter, and when we talk specifically about companies, AMD shipments have increased by 8.4%, Intel shipments decreased by 2.7%, and Nvidia shipments jumped by a very impressive 17.8%. And they also went on to say that the overall attach rate of GPUs, which includes both integrated and discrete GPUs, to PCs for the quarter was 126%, which is apparently up 2.3% from last quarter. Now, I will say that normally the second quarter of a year is expected to be down compared to the previous, but obviously, with everything that's going on in the world right now, all of the expectations and the ebb and flow of the marketplace has pretty much been chucked out of the window, at least for now. Eventually, I'm sure we'll have to go and pick it up from where it was thrown and kind of, you know, carry on in some form of normality eventually, but obviously, this situation, sadly, is not going anywhere anytime soon, and in that note, GPU manufacturers are guiding up for the next quarter by an average of 12%. But one thing I just want to quickly focus on from John Petty Research report is the absolutely monstrous market share that Nvidia apparently commands from the discrete GPU market. And as you can see from the chart that they've provided from their report, they control 80% of the discrete GPU market share, which is a slight increase uh, for Nvidia from the last quarter they controlled 75% which in itself was an increase from the previous quarter to that which was 71% and obviously AMD controlled 20% which is you know not bad I won't exactly turn up my nose at 20% but 80% of the market that, um, that's quite a lion share I'm just kind of picturing Nvidia like Smao just sitting on a pile of geographics cards like hmm welcome to my kingdom <laughs> anyway let's move on now do we have a bit of a statement here from John Petty, president of JPR, who says that the, quote, 
world situation has been disruptive and had varying effects on the market. Some sales that might have occurred in Q3, such as notebooks for the back to school season, have been pulled into Q2 while desktop sales declined. Intel's manufacturing challenges have also negatively affected desktop sales. We believe that stay-at-home orders have continued to decrease demand in spite of the record-setting unemployment levels. As economies open up, consumer confidence will be an important metric to watch. Safe to say the impact from everything that's happened this year and probably will still happen in the future is impossible to say. It really, really is. I don't want to talk too much on that, guys, because I'm sure we're all here just to kind of forget about all that stuff for now. And We're going to move on now to some NVIDIA-related things, the first of which is some things from MSI. Anyway, so you'll be happy to note that no salt is required for this one. This is an official announcement from MSI. They have introduced their latest addition to their MPG line of products, the MPG GF Power Supplies, and it is a series of three power supplies, and MSI have officially confirmed that they have been designed to be compatible with the upcoming next-generation graphics cards from NVIDIA. And it kind of makes sense to do this now because, of course, it is MSI's very first foray into power supply land. And I do have a direct quote from the product page to give you a bit of a look-see, and obviously you can see the pictures on the screen. They said, quote, MSI unveils its very first and very own power supply products, the MPG GF series. The MPG GF series has three models, including a 650GF, a 750GF, and eight. A, a, a 850GF. Words are hard. Notably, the MPG GF series can support all the way to the latest NVIDIA graphics cards prepared for the highest of requirements. IO supports VGA port up to 3x 8-pin, CPU port up to 2x 8-pin, or supports VGA 4x 8-pin and CPU 1x 8-pin installation method. If you want to learn more about the nitty gritty of what's going on with these power supplies, perhaps you want to consider them as an option. If, if you're thinking of upgrading to the RTX 30 cards, you will of course find the product page link below. Oh, and a quick update on that note of power. There has been some new pictures of the 12 pin power connector, which of course was pretty much confirmed by NVIDIA in their little tease that they did yesterday. Paul did cover this extensively. Go check out our video. I will of course link it below, but it's also just on the channel yesterday, you can find it fairly easily. Anyway, the Korean tech publication Quasar Zone has posted some three, sorry, three high resolution pictures of a new Molex Microfit 12 pin connector that NVIDIA have adapted for their Ampere graphics cards. Again, just for the Founders Edition ones. And it's just nice to get a bit more of a clearer look at what's going on with the 12 pin power connector because, of course, we've seen you know, designs and drawings and stuff like that. But these are some pretty nice close looks at what's going on with the 12 pin power connector. And you may remember that the rumors currently state that they are, they are rated for a significantly higher power delivery than an eight pin. And uh, with reports, older reports to be fair, suggesting up to 600 watts. Now, of course, it is mere days until NVIDIA officially unveiled the Ampere card, so I'm sure we'll learn all about what's going on with the 12-pin power connector for the uh, Founders Edition cards, and I am really excited to finally learn what's going on with Ampere. After months of rumour, speculation, leaks, and so on, it's going to be great to know 100,000% what is happening with Ampere. Anyway, we're going to move on to some news from Palette regarding the, once again, RTX 30 cards. And this, once again, comes to us thanks to the EEC and was helpfully shared to the world by videocards.com. So, Palette registered today 171 products with the Eurasian Economic Commission. Now, I will stress before I say anything else that this does not mean we're going to get 171 variants from Palette. That would be kind of crazy. There's been numerous times in the past where they've registered something with the EEC and an uh, actual physical product that you can buy has never actually surfaced. So I think they're just covering their bases if they ever do decide to do, you know, oh, we could do this variant on this one and this variant on this one. They're just getting the registration out of the way. But this does not mean we will see 171 RTX 30 cards because that would be nuts. Let's, let's all agree on that. Anyway, the most interesting thing that we can take away from this lengthy list of cards is we see the very first appearance of the RTX 3060. But sadly, we can't really learn much from this list other than the fact that they're planning fewer SKUs than the 3070, but 
that could just be for now. For all we know, there could be more added in the future if the 3060 ends up being really popular. Perhaps, you know, it could be nice price versus performance or whatever. Obviously, it depends on the pricing, uh, which, of course, we'll get a look at the suggested pricing from NVIDIA for the Founders Edition cards anyway uh, in just a few days. And as I said previously in this video, I'm just really excited to find out exactly what's going on with Ampere. And of course, from AMD's side as well with RDNA 2, after all of the hype and expectation and everything surrounding the upcoming event from NVIDIA, AMD definitely need to respond, and they need to respond strongly. Because I think we can all agree that a more even competition between AMD and NVIDIA is definitely needed uh, especially in the price versus performance arena, given the rumoured prices, I will say the rumoured prices for the top end cards is not exactly pocket change, but I don't think anyone expected them to be, to be fair, given the <laughs> rumoured specs of the 3090 in particular. It's no surprise that the rumoured prices for that are heart-stoppingly high. But of course, again, not too long to find out exactly what those prices are, but... If they're not at least in the ballpark of the figures that we've seen, I will be very, very surprised given the monstrous specs of the flagship cards from NVIDIA that we have seen. But again, pinch of salt, TM, always required. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.